Hey hey, we have two more stories for you. These are from Pro Revenge. In the first one, a man gets revenge on his landlord for renting him a house that isn't rentable. In the second, a security guard enacts his revenge against people trying to tarnish his reputation. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This story is titled, Landlord thinks I owe 8 months of rent. Didn't know I knew tenant laws. Okay not sure this goes here but here it goes. This took place during the middle of 2018. My wife, three kids, and I were looking for a new place to rent because our current renter was selling and had given us a 60-day notice to move. During this time my wife's mother had a friend let's call him Sam. Sam had a four-bedroom two-bath house that he was in the middle of remodeling to get ready to sell. Because of this, certain parts of the house like some of the walls weren't fully painted and some of the floors were old. At the current time my family really needed a place to stay and our budget wouldn't allow us to rent any places over $1,000 a month. Keep in mind I am a disabled veteran and have a lot of time to sit and research things when I need to. First part signing the lease and getting the keys. During the lease signing we went over to the house for Sam to point out all the things that were being worked on and what things weren't complete when we were moving in. For example, the kitchen floor was being replaced, the kitchen counter, carpet was being added throughout the whole house, currently all wood floors. When we got there, we pointed out that there was still trash all over the floor and bug traps all over the ground, he assured us that it would all be cleaned before we moved in. So, we hand over our deposit and sign the lease for $1,000 a month. He says that he is going on vacation out of state and won't be back for six months, but that contractors will be stopping by to work on the house. He leaves me a list of the work that is going to be done and then we wait. Move in date, three days later we are given the go-ahead that we are able to move in and that he will be back in six months. We arrive at the house to find his two cars and motorcycle in the driveway with nowhere but the street for us to park. This becomes very important later in court. The house is still just as dirty as the day we signed the lease. But with us really needing a place to stay me and my wife just take pictures and note everything wrong and get to cleaning. Now remember this was a four-bedroom, two-bathroom house, however, the owner left so much stuff in the house that the fourth bedroom was filled from wall to wall with junk we decided to just close that door. And not use the room. Keep in mind that because we didn't have access to the room because of the owner, landlord we were allowed to deduct that room from the rent. This deduction of rent becomes a pattern soon. Living there. Now we lived there a total of nine months. During the first six months we tried to get a hold of the landlord by phone with a way to pay rent but we never got a reply from him after the day we got the keys. So, everything that went wrong we just kept track of. Place had bugs, nails sticking out of the floors, and many other hazards. Finally, on the seventh month Sam returns from his vacation out of state and retrieves one of the cars in the driveway. He tells us he's sorry for not responding and tells us we will figure out the rent and fixing my issues over the next week. On month 8, I still haven't paid him anything as I sent him a letter stating that I would be withholding rent until the safety issues with the house are fixed. Where we live this is legal. During this time, instead of just fixing the issues and then getting rent from me, we are served with an eviction notice. Keep in mind we have kept record of everything wrong with this house including everything to code. Time in court. First red flag in the eviction is the copy of the lease that was attached, it was an altered copy of the original I still had, so the documents didn't even match. So, let's do a little math, each month I withheld rent I gave a detailed invoice of all the charges I'm reducing the rent by. I send all of this in the return on the eviction, and guess who shows up to the house five days before court? You bet, it's Sam, he starts yelling at the front door telling me to give him my debit card, so that he can go get my rent out right now. I calmly tell him that even though he is the owner, landlord, that under the current laws he must give me a 24-hour notice before being on the property unless it is an emergency. I call the cops so that I can document that he showed up and tried to scare me into giving him money on the spot. Five days later we show up at court and his lawyer walks over to me and presents me with a deal. He tells me that his client, Sam, would like to just have me move out in two weeks and call the debt even. I tell him, no thank you, and we can talk about it with the judge. I present everything on my part, hundreds of photos, and invoices from each month about my rent reduction. Plus, all the safety violations. 1. Room no access minus 250 per month by 9 months, 2. Work cleaning and taking care of pool, was in lease to have pool guy never showed, minus 100 per month by 9 months. 3. Lawn care also in lease to be provided, minus 50 per month by 9 months, 4. Storage for one motorcycle minus 25 per days by 9 months, 5. 
storage for one car minus 55 per days by nine months. 6. Storage for one car minus 55 per days by seven months. He picked this one up after vacation. Safety violations, no carbon monoxide detector in the house, no working smoke alarms, all the windows are supposed to have screens, most were broken or missing, also, because of the pool and no fence around it. The back door needed an alarm to beep when opened, county safety code, exposed wires on most electrical outlets, ceiling fans not installed but wires just exposed, improper foundation for rear stairs leading out back door. No license for enclosed backyard room, had a 30 foot by 20 foot area off back door which was enclosed by a screened area, county required a license for anything that was attached to the house. Also, the piled up junk in the fourth bedroom was considered a fire hazard. Now, I picked the rate per day to store the vehicles at the house, because legally I could have had them towed off the property even though they are the owners. This is the rate the impound lot would have charged per day if the vehicle was in the lot. This added up to a total invoice of $36,750 less than $9,000 owed for rent leaving $27,750 owed. After hearing both sides the judge ruled in my favor giving my landlord three options. 1. He could pay me $9,999 max allowed in small claims court here, and I would have seven days to be off of the property. 2. He could give me a normal 30-day notice to vacate, and I wouldn't pay anything, and he would return my deposit in full, within 24 hours after keys are returned. Or. 3. I could continue to live there, but no rent would be owed until all safety issues were fixed and his stuff on the property removed. He chose to go with option 2. On a side note, I found out from my wife's mother about a year after we moved out some of the shady upgrades he did to the house caused a house fire and it burned down. This wasn't anything I did but it felt so good to know that karma gets you in the end. Edit noticed something in one of my comments that I pointed out that Sam was doing upgrades. He didn't start doing these said upgrades until after I had submitted my response to the eviction. My response had to have everything I was showing in court, so his lawyer was shown all the safety issues and all the pictures. Basically, he wanted to fix everything right before court and then say that the house had no issues. This story is titled, How I Got Even With A Crap Former Coworker That Wanted To Spread Rumors. Obligatory on mobile. Okay, so I was recommended to post this story to this sub. I'm going to be honest. There are no saints in this story. There is no good guy or bad guy. I felt I was wronged, and I got revenge. That said let me give you all some backstory and get to the good shite we're all here for. I worked as a security guard for a few years at a factory. My last year I had made site supervisor and ran the guard booth. We were contractors. Our contract was simple, make sure everyone who comes in is logged, watch the cameras, call bigwigs to pick up their visitors. Every now and then we did a walk through or some paperwork. Simple. And it leaves you with a lot of relative downtime depending on your shift. During my tenure I made a few friends, a few enemies and got along with most of the people working there. It's surprisingly easy to investigate incidents when people like talking with you. One of the enemies I made was a supervisor, let's call him Ted. Ted had worked his way up from a line worker and felt that since he had made his way from nothing, he deserved his ego. He had squared himself firmly against anyone he couldn't control and I never gave him his due. We all know his type. Now Ted treated his line workers pretty poorly. And more than a few came to me to report his misconduct. One of our duties was to log any of these complaints as an incident report, submit a copy to the factory admin, submit a copy to our company, and then file the original. Ted had his own folder in that drawer. Ted did not like this. Ted did not like me. At the start of COVID we lost most of our staff in the booth. We were down to three guards trying to cover a 24-7 schedule. We did a lot of 12-hour shifts starting from March going all the way to October when I left. My company struggled to fill the missing spots, hiring two guards during that period. Neither lasted more than two weeks. October came, I was burnt. Then both my remaining guards quit. I don't blame them in the least. I immediately turned in my two weeks and refused to work more than 12 hours a day. After I turned in my notice my company scrambled to replace me and the missing guards. They got my replacement at the start of my last week and she started on a Sunday. I trained her for one day and she never came back. I discovered on my last day she had claimed that I intimidated her and made her uncomfortable. She told my boss she didn't feel safe around me. Now I was livid at this. I have never mixed business and pleasure. I'm a big guy, I work out. I have never had those intentions at work. 
It was a major joke anywhere I've worked because my tagline has always been, I don't shite where I eat. I was burned out. I had an amazing woman I am now dating who was coming out to see me in two weeks. I had spent hours training this woman. I had her scheduled during my shift for the entire week so I could walk her through everything to do with the job. I had squared off with the factory admin to keep it that way. I was doing everything I could to help her cause she was coming into a major freaking mess. Admin was looking for a different contractor. Supervisors were trying to access our files. We had shy tons of sensitive information that would have let anybody move up the ladder quick. Or at the least remove a lot of competition. It was chaos. At this point, I hadn't had a day off or a good night's sleep in three months. And the boss I had only ever talked to over the phone had arrived in person to tell me this shite. I had almost been terminated over this on my last frickin' week. If I didn't have the work ethic my father taught me, I would have walked then and there. I finished my day and walked away never intending to think of that job again. Now the story should end here. But it didn't and this is the juicy part y'all are hankering for. See after I left a few friends kept me up to date on the going-ons. My replacement came back for a day and then quit, citing the long hours would keep her away from her kid. I was salty, but it's not my problem. Until a few days ago. See Ted had found out about her allegations and began spreading rumors I had been terminated for sexual harassment. He then told people that I was a serial harasser and had caused a former female employee to quit as well. She had left as I had gotten the site supervisor job over her. I had seniority and she had a dirty disciplinary record. She had a few incidents that had nearly gotten her fired. I didn't like this, especially given the two-thirds of the incident reports I had on Ted were for sexual harassment. What Ted didn't know is that I don't like being fricked with. While I'm quiet and unassuming I had plenty of time to build my MAD folders. Little personal history, when I was a computer tech I had been royally screwed over and nearly fired by my then boss. He gave me directives that were a violation of company policy, bad enough that when they came to light, I was given an immediate final written warning. Since I had no proof, he told me to do what I did I shouldered full blame. Since that day I have created mutually assured destruction folders, MAD folders, on anyone that I felt would try to frick me. Ted was one such person. All the originals of my folders are kept hidden in online storage and most are never touched. But Ted pissed me off and was threatening my future job prospects. Reputation is everything, so, I opened his folder. I had access to the camera system at the factory. Folks, small town factories are disgusting. People do shite you wouldn't believe. One really popular thing to do is freak in the parking lot. Ted had built a little harem for himself by giving better line positions to women that gave him a little action. And I had pictures and video. I made a nice little folder with some choice clips and stills. Then I sent them to his wife and oldest daughter. Dude is 20-ish years married with four daughters, two in college, one graduating, one graduating in a year or two. No clue what happened there but I doubt it's going well for him. And that wasn't the end. I wasn't satisfied. This never would have been a thing if that replacement hadn't used me as an excuse to duck and run. I told Yell there's no saints here. During her one day of training my replacement had asked me about cell phones with good cameras and a bunch of weird policy questions. A few careful questions and lo and behold she has an OnlyFans. I warned her that was a huge violation of our contract with the company. Any type of sex work is forbidden as the company has clients in Vegas and some European countries where that is legal and doesn't want any work as moonlighting. The company is incredibly strict on that. Strict to the point I could have terminated her on the spot. They are impartial, man or woman, it is not tolerated. Thinking on this and being very irate, I track it down. And she was nice enough to have links to her premium snap. I bundled this and send it to three groups. My previous employer, the IRS, and her ex. She had been in a protracted custody battle with him and our state is a little conservative. Judges here do not look favorably on sex workers. Most have a prejudice that the women are hooked on drugs and will harm the child. And I just gave her ex evidence of sex work and possibly tax fraud. If his lawyer can't get at least split custody no child support, that on the ex for being a piece of shite. So that's my story. Let me know if you all feel this is pro-revenge or not cause honestly, I am not sure if I went far enough. Thank you so very much for listening. Please check out my other videos and like and subscribe.